Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Well, hello, 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 everybody. So um, I'm really delighted to be running this session for Hospital Rooms um, Digital School. So, um, yeah, we're going to be making imagining creatures out of air drying clay. So just to check that you've got all your materials, you will need some air drying clay. Um, you know, this is a kilo block. You only need a sixth of a kilo, really. So you'll need a knife. Um, a pencil. If you've got a paintbrush, it might come in handy, but no problem if you haven't. And it's quite good to have a piece of paper just in case you want to sketch some ideas down. So before we get making in clay, um, I just thought I'd sort of run through some different approaches to creating or developing your character. So to focus my mind or uh, Feed my imagination. I've got some books from my bookshelf. So there's this book here, which is um, Wilder Man. And um, yeah, I just, um, it's one of my all time favorite books. I might just move the figure out of the way. So these are um, traditional costumes, European costumes. And the book is just full of fantastic imagery. But, you know, look, every page has got a different costume. It's fantastic. And then the Sarah Finelli's mytho mythology book. Again, loads of images, but I'll just show you a couple. So is this image. These are amazing cyclops. And then the last book is Five Little Fiends by Sarah Dyer. So I'm really showing you this one, well, because I really like the characters, but you know, the characters, they've got such characters, but there's very little detail there. So it's a really good approach to when you make a small figure in clay, that, you know, it's the, it's the tilt of the head, the, the way you put your feet, just some bristles on the chin. It's those little things that really, um, add to the character, you, you know, but it is just a small character, so you really don't, but, you know, it needs to be quite simple. But, you know, you can have this many different approaches that you can have to um, building your character. So this one here, I don't know if you can see that there, but, you know, I made this because somebody really wound me up on the day and it's just a way of expressing myself, calming down. So, there's that sort of approach, but you could just, a character that just springs out of your imagination. Um, that's all that's needed really. So um, I like to begin with a bit of a, just a quick basic sketch. Uh, you know, it's just a good way of working out ideas. But when I first made, when I made my first creature in clay, I just went straight for the clay and just saw, you know, what came out really. So, um, what you need, I'll just go back to the sketch. When you make your figure in air drying clay, it needs to have a good sturdy base so it doesn't fall over and it doesn't give way under the weight of the clay. So you can see this one's got some really good sturdy legs. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you a step-by-step -step way to make um, your standing up figure. But you can follow those instructions step by step or you can just adapt them so you can make your own figure and just yeah, adapt the, um, you know, the information that I'm showing you. So you can see I keep my air drying clay sealed up like this, but also in a bag. So it's double bag so it doesn't dry out. I'm just gonna get my lump of clay. And get in there. So this is about an eighth of a kilo block of clay. So what I always do is I always tear off a bit of clay because you might want to add something to your creature. 
um, halfway through making, or it's also quite good to sort of test out mark making and that sort of thing later on. So, I'm gonna get my clay, my ball of clay, and I'm gonna sort of really pat it so it gets rid of decreases and it's just a nice solid block of clay. Oh, I forgot to say you need some water <laughs> and some bits and bobs. I've got some here, some googly eyes, some sticks, some feathers, that sort of thing. And so you've got your ball of clay, pat it until it's a nice solid ball. And then, so I'm just gonna show you how to make a standing up figure. So you just need to roll it about so it's taking on a sort of an elongated shape like this. Okay, so I like to make out of a solid block of clay. It makes it more durable if it gets knocked over and it's just the way I like to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm now gonna sketch out the basic figure. So I'm going to squeeze a head in there. And you don't want your head to be too small because you might want to sort of pull some horns out of there or a snout or some ears. So there's my basic head. And then I'm gonna take a knife and I'm gonna cut some legs and some arms. Okay. So, as I said, it needs a good sturdy base. So some nice chunky legs or some chunky feet. And you just go around sort of refining the shapes. So you just squeeze and pull and, you know, I'm making the legs a bit longer. And sometimes the legs do sag under the weight of the clay because when the clay is wet, it, um, it's heavier. When it's light, it's nice and dry. So you've got to keep an eye on a sagging body or a sagging leg. So I'm just pushing and squeezing those legs a little bit thinner. Now, for some reason, my clay's got a little bit dry. I'm sure yours won't be. But you can just dab it a little bit. Oh, a little bit. Too much there. A little bit with water. Okay. So it doesn't dry out too much. If you, drab, if you have put too much water on there, it can be a little bit too slimy. So it's hard to get a grip and push and pull into place. But So I'm just going around, making sure, just refining each of the shapes. I feel that those arms have gone a little bit pointy. And as they're not wings, as they're supposed to be hands, then yeah, so I'm just going to go around. Now, I think I'm not really going to bother with the back of my figure because I'm going to keep putting it down so you can see. But it is good to work all the way around your figure, you know, making sure that it looks good at all angles. Could you yeah. work with salt dough here, Joe, or do you find air drying clay is, is the best way, the best thing to work with, best material? Do you know what? I don't, I don't even, I have worked with salt dough, but not for such a long time, but I am sure. So, so, you know, everything has its own way, doesn't it? But of course you could work with salt dough um, when working on this. I'm sure you could, and I might give it a go myself. But um, yeah, it all has its own properties. And actually, even when I swap air drying clay to a different clay, I'm, I have to go, oh, this isn't quite, you know, and you have to adapt to these things, but yes, you can, and actually you can have, so with this figure, because it might, just in case you're doing it in, with a um, salt dough, and it's maybe not as pliable to squeeze and into different shapes. So this is made in two pieces, but I've put a stick in between to keep the head on, because, you know, things can fall off really easily if you don't make them out of a solid piece. And I'll show you later how to add pieces on, but, um, but yes sometimes you can put sticks in to make things more solid. So um, I tend, a little bit of dabbing in there, but I tend to sort of flick my fingers a bit to get 
rid of some of the excess so it doesn't get too um, too wet. Okay, so I'm, I'm you know I'm happy with the shape of that. Um, yeah, I can see so now. We've yeah, had go people uh, just joining us sort of fairly oh, recently. Yes. So would you be able to just give a very quick overview of what you've done? Yes. So what I've done is I've got my lump of clay. I've torn off a little bit because it's good to keep something a little bit extra to add on to your clay. You don't want to have, you don't want your to use too much clay because um, one, it takes ages to dry, but it's also quite hard to get it to stand up. So I've really patted it into a ball so it's a nice solid ball and then I've rolled it so I've made an elongated shape and then with my knife I have cut some legs and some arms and I've squeezed out the head and that's that's how I've got to this stage and it's amazing how quickly you can work or just how slowly you can work um, you know, you can be quick responsive. You know, I made this little thing with a bit of extra clay that I had, and he was just really quick to make. So, um, yeah, so you can work quickly or some things just take a much longer. So, anyway, so I've now got to the head. I'm now gonna smooth his, the face off a little bit. So you can use a pencil, I'm using a pencil to, to give a, bit more definition to the neck. Pencils are great tools. I really like using a pencil. But as you can see, I've used my hands a lot. And I do like using my hands because that's the way I am and that's the way I work. But also, if you use your hands, because when it's dry and it's finished, because you've made it with your hands, it sits so nicely in your hand to hold. So this thumb helped make this tummy. So it just Resting my thumb on there and holding it like this feels a really nice thing to oh, feels a really nice thing to do. Yeah, you'll find that they tipple over a lot. <laughs> but, a really, uh, comment, yeah. Joe. Um, someone said that it reminds me them of Mort, and I haven't thought oh, yeah. of Mort in a really long time. <laughs> um, and also, do you do you ever animate? I I don't animate. Um, because I just like making. To spend time animating um, would take me away from making, but I would like to work with somebody who did some animation like this. So yes, it does look a little bit, bit like more. It certainly does. And that's, you know, that's another um, thing to say. So really great comment, because it's, it's made me think of other things that when I'm making in clay, I like to go with, to a certain extent, I to go with the way the going, the natural way it's sort of showing me. But I also, so I, I take, I always keep that bit in mind and, you know, some happy accidents, but I also bear in mind the shape that I intended it to go as well, because, you know, so I can push and pull it into different shapes because it feels so nice to make, yeah. To, but I, I guess that's going with the flow of the clay as well. So I'm gonna start working on the head. So it's quite good to get the really good shape of the body. And I think that, I don't know if you found this already everybody, that you've got to be a bit careful because once you start working on one area, you start to dent another, but you can always really easily squeeze it back. So I'm gonna make some ears in here. So with just a little bit of pinching, I'm making some ears. And oh, it's um, it's looking less like morph, um, and uh, and not like anything I've seen. Anyway, so now I'm going to squeeze squeeze a snout in there, and I don't know. Is it looking like a mouse? Um, maybe a bear. I don't know, but um, I'm going to squeeze some. A snout in there and it's really nice to use your little finger is a really good tool maybe the nail of your finger to make a nice little eye socket in there and it's really good to keep eyeballing your figure so you hold it up to your eyes and so you can see one what's happening under its chin which actually it seems to have gone a little bit of a miss under its chin so 
what's happening with the chin like that, but it's also, it's just good to see what it looks like face to face. And you look, because you need to keep looking at your figure in a different way, so. And if you knock, if you knock your, your ears out of shape or your horns or whatever you've decided to do, that's fine because it just can really easily be put back into shape. So I think I'm gonna give it some little pause. I always like to have a bit of a tummy going on. So with the knife, I'm just gonna put some dents in there. And actually I think I'm gonna lift some of the clay from the legs up into making a tummy. And you know, sometimes when you first do, you first change the shape, it can look a bit unreal or just a bit harsh. So it's good to get your fingers, flick the excess water off and just soften it in there. So it doesn't look as though you've just made that dent out of using a tool, but it's more natural like that. I think I'm going to elongate the legs. And as your clay goes on, it will dry out just a little bit, which is good because it means that um, it stands up a little bit better. But you can see, I think, and then I might just chop away, use the knife to chop away bits if they don't feel, maybe they don't feel too equal or maybe they just look as though they could just do with a bit of elongating. So I've got nice little pores on there. I have no idea whether it's, well, it's a bit of this and a bit of that, I think that's what it is. So um, I think I'll use this time to sort of show you about adding a bit. Quite often, my figures end up flat on the back because I'm sort of concentrating on the front or they're lying down. And um, if you want to add anything, take a bit of clay like this. I think I'm gonna add a bit of a tail on there and a bit of a bottom, I think. So to add um, any bits of clay on, you've got to sort of merge them in together. So you're making the clay as one, even though you're starting off as two separate bits like this. So if you score the clay and sort of just dip, dip, dab it about, add a little bit of water in there. So the clay's all a bit, a little bit mushy and do the same for the area you want to add it to. So, and then a little bit of water like that. And then I'm just going to pop that on and it's looking as though it's popped on but with my knife I'm going to just blend it in there more slightly badger like tail I think but um yeah and then yeah so you're just trying to make it as one as we're doing a bit of baking actually so if you don't do that joe if you don't score it in that way is there a danger that it can become separated when the clay dries yeah when the yeah when the clay dries it can it can just pop off <laughs> um but also one also when you start to you know even that even if you think it's quite secure on there and you haven't done that scoring what can happen is is when you can when you start to move your character a bit and um, when it's still wet it can um it can reveal a weakness there. So you are just literally just going round and, um, and yeah, making it as one. That's what you're doing, making it as one. So yeah, I am this creature, you know, is coming together slowly like this, okay. So I've got something going on there. I like to think I'm just gonna put a few shapes in there. Maybe make a nice neck with my fingers, a bit like that. Okay, so I think I'll put the eyes on now. So you can use googly eyes. Um, with these two um, creatures, I used paper eyes. And with this one, I pushed in this part of the pencil and then I used the 
the pointier part and pushed in this part and that's how I got the eyes on this one. So you can use pebbles, you can use all sorts of things. So, but for this, I'm going to use some googly eyes. So you pop them in place, the place that you want them. And then you've got to have them sort of sitting into the clay a little bit, because if you don't, when they dry, they just ping off. So if you push them in a bit, so then when the clay dries, it will sort of dry around the eye and it will grip on really nicely. So I've got my eyes in place. I think I will draw a bit of a mouth. With, um, with the pencil. Now, this is where your extra bit of clay comes in place, comes into good use, because you can use it to sort of test out marks and to see how things are working. So sometimes it's good to have a sharp pencil and sometimes it's good to have it a little bit softer and blunter like this. So I want to make some nostrils. So I don't want them too sort of small and neat. So I'm just sort of seeing different shapes that I might be able to make with the pencil. So I think I'm just going We've to... just had a question, Jo. Oh, yes. Somebody's asked, they're using apple pips for the eyes. Is that oh, okay nice. in drying? That is, now that is really nice. I think I'm gonna take that one. <laughs> If that's okay. Yeah, apple pips for the eyes is really nice. I mean, you know, um, and actually that sort of reminds me that I've got um, these beech nuts here, just, um, and um, these can make really nice little hands. So, or ears, they can make really nice little ears as well. So I think it's really nice to add bits. You know, I've got I've got all sorts, pebbles, all sorts of things, but I really like the idea of um, apple um, pips for eyes. You might want, if you're using apple pips and that sort of thing, you might want to wait until they're dry because when things are dry, they get a bit smaller. Um, and, um, but I just think, give it a go. It's always worth experimenting with. So I'm just going to sort of seems to have Got a few marks on the neck. So I think it's looking a little bit mouse-like, not that I'm bothered whether it looks like a mouse or, a, or whatever, because it's all from the imagination and that is what's nice about it. So what did we get up to? I've put my eyes in. I've said that apple pips are great. Sometimes you might find that they shrink a little bit when they get a bit dry. So I've got my figure. I am going to, um, I think I'll add a little bit of a before that, I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some claws or paws on there. Now I like to have one foot in reality, so five would be good as it's the norm. So I've just made that. Then put some, I mean I'm just doing this really hovering about, so not very carefully but it, you can see the impression that I'm trying to achieve like that. Then I think I'm going to put a little bit of some hair on there but you can use twigs, you can use whatever you want. So we talked about you know you know there, it's a nice figure and everything like that but it's sometimes nice just to get a little bit more character by giving it like a good little stance like this. So it's got one foot forward, maybe one arm forward like this. You could sort of having it slightly looking in a direction and all those little things gives, um, just gives um, your figure a little bit more character, a little bit more dimension to it. So I did make this quite quickly. And as I say, sometimes you can make them really quickly, you can make them look really fantastic, or sometimes you just gotta spend longer. 
on making your figure and get lost in the world of your imaginary creature. So you can see, do you see that? It's falling over. So what you can do, and sometimes that is just the weight, so you can make its feet a little bit more placed on the ground. But what I like to do is when, I am, when I'm leaving it to dry, I like to leave it against a pot of something because it's really awful to come back, go away, come back and see it flat on the ground. And, um, but really, you know, if it's dry, you can't, it's hard to get back into place. But, you know, if you're making and it falls over and its nose gets squashed, it's so easy to get it to go right again. But these figures, they take about 24 hours, maybe a bit longer to dry. But as I say, you can just keep, you can add bits with the pencil, really nice details, a little bit of stubble, a tummy button. If you feel as though what you've added is a little bit too harsh, you can always maybe get your paintbrush and sort of soften it a little bit with, um, with water. So yeah, that's how to make a basic stand-up figure. And then it's just adding. Do you ever like paint your characters, Joe? Do you paint them once they're dry or do you tend to stick with the kind of the, the beauty of the clay? Well, I do a mixture, really. You know, I am, um, so this, this little quick creature, I felt as though I could just paint him without thinking and I, you know, and what I've done is you can see, because I've dented in his eyes with pencil, it means that when I've painted him, the eyes are still there. And then you can, you see he's got some little teeth on there mm. like that. And all I've done is just use my nail once he's been painted and I just painted it with acrylic. I am um, just use my nail to scratch out some, some teeth. That's what I did, but you know, this one, this beastie here, he's just, um, he's just painted with mud. He's just painted with stuff from the garden. You know, I've just got some soil and I've just sort of made it into a paste and just covered him. And then this one, this is all, you know, I'm, I'm sort of experimenting with making sort of bird-like and you can't really see that one so well but bird-like figures and i'm not quite there yet i'm still experimenting but with her i i painted her dark brown acrylic paint and then i don't know if you can see but i am um, then put um soil on top i sprinkled soil on top so you could but you can use acrylic paint you know with this one which is really work in progress and really um uh I really like the expression spitting feathers um, because um, yeah, I think it's a very true expression. So with this, I painted this brown, put some mud on it, and then with, um, with my knife, I think actually, or maybe I used a toothpick, I scratched away these marks. So, so we have a question on, on, on that, um, Joe. Do you, do you paint them when they're still wet so that you're able no. to do that? No, so what you do is you wait for them to dry and then you paint them and actually what you'll find is is that even if they're dry when you start painting them they start they go a bit and slightly tacky just because you know it's uh, it's not fired clay but um even though they're really good and solid just by drying in the air so yeah you wait for them to dry completely and even when they feel nice and dry if you turn them over you can get a sense that they're still a bit gooey inside so um yeah wait for them to dry completely so you can see i've used some twigs for the hair here so um yeah you just use whatever whatever you your wherever your imagination takes you or just whatever you've got it at hand mm -hmm. to um yeah to make your figure and if you're the working with air dry clay for the first time yes. would you sort of advise people to sort of try different methods I mean there you've sort of you squeezed it to make the kind of snout but I can see you've also made beaks and things like that so would you say it's worth kind of just experimenting with lots of different ways to get the features or maybe trying to develop a style that you feel comfortable with yeah for definite I mean you know each of these have all been squeezed each of them has been squeezed 
but it's amazing how you make, you know, when you make your first figure, you don't really think and it's really nice and you, and then when you look at it, you think, ooh, and you see um, all the possible, you see many possibilities. And so it's really good to make in a series of, you know, make one and then make another and another. So, so with them, um, so I've made this figure because I'm quite interested in birds because, you know, well, human birds, because it's one thing that we just can't do. We can run, we can climb, we can do what, but we can never fly. So I think it's an interesting, um, I think that's why I'm more interested, I'm interested in birds. But I made this one and I'm not, I'm not complete, it's not there yet. So then I made this one, which you can't see because I'm wearing dark clothes. This one here. And then my final one is I've made this one, but I still know that there's a different character still to come out. But it's just one has led to the other, has led to the other. And sometimes it's just squeezing something in a certain way and you just think, ah, the next one, I'm going to do this with it or that with it, you know. So it is really nice to play around. So this one really was playing around and you can see that these, you know, these eyes have just been where I've just rubbed the clay with my fingers and I've twisted it and the nose, it's all been, it's all fits in my hand. That's what it does, it all fits in my hand. But to go back to the colouring, sometimes if I'm a little bit fearful about colouring, I, um, you know, I get some chalk pastels and I grind them up a bit. So with this one, um, it's, it's mainly white, but um, I think if the camera was a little bit clearer, you could see that I have sort of um, rubbed some um, chalk, some darker chalk on the features to bring them out. So it, and also, so it's not so dazzly white. And that's another thing you can do if you want your figure to be, uh, not to be completely covered, it's really nice to use um, chalk pastels, sponge, you know, make some powder and then rub them in and spray them maybe with a bit of hairspray to fix them there so yeah amazing well thank you so much joe i feel like i've learned so much watching the session i really want to get get going now and make some of my own um i wonder if we can go back to the slideshow louis yep um Perfect. Well, I hope everyone who joined us that you enjoyed that. If you are making your own creatures, then we'd love to see them. You can upload them to our gallery, which you'll find at www.hospital-rooms.com. And we'll be sharing all of the images of the work made on that gallery um, and also on our social media. So you can upload that anonymously or you can add your name. It's completely up to you. I'd like to just thank Jo once again for such a fantastic workshop. Um, as you know, this is a weekly series that we do. We are an arts and mental health charity based in London. London and when it's not COVID times we work in units transforming them with contemporary art. We were really thrilled to work with Jo on a project back in 2016 and you can find out about all of our projects and the work we do at the website address I just gave you which is hospital-rooms.com and also on our social media but you can find us on Instagram we're underscore hospital rooms. We'll be back next week with a workshop with Shaila Kumari Singh Berman and that's going to be the last Last in this current series but then we're going to be back with an all new term at the end of the month so you can keep track of all of our updates on our website on our social media and hopefully we'll see you next week